Welcome back to this Computer Science 1 video series. In this module, we'll cover using strings. This module is split into five parts. In this first part, we'll introduce string basics. In the second part, we'll cover how to manipulate strings and their contents. In the third part, we'll cover how to process strings. And in the fourth part, we'll cover more advanced string processing, since strings are usually used to hold data. We'll end with a few exercises. First, let's understand the basics. A string is a sequence of characters. In C, we mostly deal with ASCII text characters, but more generally a string may contain any Unicode character. Unicode is a much larger standard that still includes the basic ASCII characters, but also international characters, such as Chinese, Japanese, Korean fonts, and even unfortunately modern emoji characters. As of Unicode version 10, released in June 2017, about 136,000 characters have been defined. The current standard has plenty of room for growth, as it can support up to 1.1 million characters. For our purposes, however, we'll stick with the basic ASCII character set. Besides, C does not have strong support for Unicode unless you use a library. Different languages represent strings in different ways. In C, a string is simply just an array that holds char elements. So essentially everything that we've covered with arrays, such as static arrays versus dynamic arrays, and the use of malloc is applicable to strings. There is one huge difference though. In C, every string must be terminated with a null terminating character, the backslash zero character. Failure to null terminate a string will result in undefined behavior and potential segmentation faults, bus errors, and other problems. It is important to understand that the null terminating character is the ASCII character with a value of zero. It is not the same thing as the character zero, which has an ASCII value of 48. It's not the same thing as the endline character. It is not the same thing as the null pointer. It is the null terminating character and it's its own thing. We've used strings in a limited capacity already. So far we've used single characters, and character literals denoted with single quotes. Frequently, we've also used string literals, which have been denoted with double quotes. However, now we'll want to start using string variables. We'll look at several ways that you can do this, including static strings, static strings with initialization, dynamic strings using character pointers, and string constants. However, we'll also show probably why you don't want to do this too often. First, let's look at static string declarations. This syntax should be familiar from when we covered arrays. The declaration creates a string that can hold up to 99 characters. Only 99 because room is needed for the null terminating character at the end. This character array can hold shorter strings, but it cannot hold strings that are more than 99 characters. As with arrays, there's no guarantee on the contents of this array at declaration. Consequently, it may not be null terminated. Technically, the C standard doesn't even consider this a string, but simply just a character array. C only considers something a string if it's properly null terminated. It's a bit more useful to also initialize a static string when it's declared using the following syntax. It creates a character array of size 6 because it automatically includes the null terminating character for you, unlike the previous syntax. At declaration, the contents capital H-E-L-L-O are loaded into this array, but they may be changed later on. We refer to this as being mutable. In C, strings are generally mutable, meaning that their contents can be changed. As with static array declarations, static strings are allocated on the stack and come with all the same limitations. That's why you'll probably mostly want to work with dynamic strings. Dynamic strings are created using malloc and casting to a character pointer. Characters are almost universally one byte, but we'll stick with the best practice of using the size of macro. The declaration and initialization again creates a character array of size 100. So as before, it can only hold a string of up to 99 characters because room is needed for the null terminating character. As with other dynamic arrays, the contents of the array at initialization are undefined and may or may not be null terminated. Dynamic strings are allocated on the heap just like dynamic arrays. Most of your strings will likely be of this type. 
Finally, you can use the following syntax to create a string. This is a constant string declaration. It creates a dynamically allocated string on the heap, but it results in a read-only immutable string, a string that cannot be changed. What's actually happening here is that the keyword const is implicitly being included, which we had previously used to prevent changes to the array. However, in this case, the compiler generally cannot catch and prevent attempts to change the contents at compile time. So you may want to avoid this type of declaration unless you really want a dynamically allocated, immutable string for some reason. To conclude this introduction, let's show how string contents can be manipulated character by character. Since strings are simply character arrays, each individual character can be indexed, and a value can be assigned to it. Let's take a look at a full demonstration. First, let's take a look at a visualization of the various ways of declaring strings. This first one is a static declaration along with an initialization. So the contents hello, along with a null terminating character, are loaded into the array, but the array is still of size 10 and could hold longer strings of length up to nine, but currently its length is only five. The second is a dynamic allocation, which is on the heap. A character array of size 10 is created, but its contents are undefined. The final declaration is also a dynamic declaration. The string is allocated on the heap, and it's just big enough to hold the assigned string along with the null terminating character. However, if we attempt to change the contents of this, it results in a bus error or segmentation fault. It's because this array is read-only. Attempts to write to it are explicitly forbidden. Now let's get some more practice. Let me go ahead and create a static string declaration. The size of this character array is actually 13 because it includes the null terminating character for us. Let's go ahead and print it out to be sure. Now let's manipulate the contents of this array. We'll fix the lowercase h and make it into a capital H. The h is at index zero and we set it equal to a character literal, the uppercase h, using single quotes. And it works. You cannot assign a string value to a character. For example, this would be wrong. Now let's go ahead and cut the string short. We set the sixth character, that is the space after the hello, to the null terminating character. When we print it out, the string is now cut off. However, this does not change the contents of the rest of the array. Let's go ahead and restore it. And as you can see, the rest of the contents were not changed. The last valid character is at index 11. There is a character at index 12 because the array is of size 13 but it's in the null terminating character. If we attempt to set it, we get garbage results. 
This is because our string is no longer a valid string. It's no longer null terminated. So when we try to perform operations on it, such as printing it out to the screen, the program will continue reading character after character until it finally sees a null terminating character. In this case, it printed out garbage. In other cases, it could start accessing memory that doesn't belong to us or lead to undefined behavior, corrupting our own memory. Even worse than that, would be reassigning it. In this case, it's a compiler error, and the compiler won't even allow us to do something like this. In other situations, it's even worse. It could lead to memory leaks or other corrupted memory problems. In general, you should not be using the assignment operator to set the contents of a character array. Instead, we'll learn how to resolve this in the next part.